captain. And it looks like Ability Man Jr. there has managed to set up finally for an arrow. Grimstroke gone. Doom in trouble also. Follow through here from the Marana is a leap in two seconds. She can jump to catch up, but do they have the damage to finish him off? They should do here if Yabby just moves forward, but Rusman's going to try and cut him off, close out this potential retreat from Yamaguchi, but he's shrining. He's retreating. He nets up the Meepo. In come the Poofs. The ensnares from Rusman as well will catch out the Doom, and he will finally die. Additional value there from the Dire team, able to force the shrine to be expended and Kimo has walked into a dangerous spot himself. Goes for a warding movement, but caught by an arrow on his way through and our retreat now as Bane spotted by the doom. Infernal Blade will make him pay. Rusman though gonna poof away. Damage being dealt, it's not lethal though. Rusman should just keep on running, it feels like, with his Meepo, but he turns the fight, the life skills coming through, the Kotal, the Illuminate, no, the whatever it's called, the big Ignis Fatos is absolutely destroying them. They couldn't finish the Meepo. The light shining bright for the Keeper of the Light, and now the Doom onto the Marana. She's half HP, so should be able to survive. Picks up a Bounty Rune on her way through with the Moonlight Shadow, and they've caught another one in the back. It's Chemo gone down for the count. Four heroes down in this Radiant Jungle. Three, I guess, more correctly, is the Meepo. Does have a number of icons on the map. He's ruptured up and hit by the Blood Rite. Silenced and magnetized with the Alchemist lurking around, but the Fiend's Grip is there and they turn to fight. Rusman, life stealing up, and there it is. Ignis Fatus comes in. It's a white hole, and Bloodseek is caught in the midst of it all. RRQ clear up three, and it looks so bloody easy for them. Chase forward now as the Bristleback aims towards Chemo. Ah, Grimstroke, he's done four. The Sad Trampone's playing. The Fat Lady singing, and R7 will clear up another one. Four in a row. They have scanned this Meepo coming in. But they didn't know the x rag was set up. And Atomic Yamaguchi cannot save the Alchemist. And what's Alchemist still about halfway towards that Radiance recipe. Ignis Fatus comes through. Only really catches the Doom there. Still the Radiant team piling cooldowns into a lost fight. As Rusman continues chasing forward. Blink is up, Aegis ready, Ethereal Blade to go as well, but the poofs will clear him up and a triple kill for Rusman. Looks like it might be putting this game to an end. Well, and there we go with the Ignis Fatus coming through. A little disco ball, causing a few issues here as the Radiant try and defend their high ground, but the retreat is on. Rupture's out, Rusman caught. Aegis down and the Meepo's in trouble. This could be problematic now for RRQ and they've lost Rusman. He has buyback available and he might be forced to use it here to win this fight, but it looks like the rest of his team is doing decently enough regardless. Alchemist sprinting forward, but the Bristleback is a tanky bastard and he is impossible to bring down this. Uh, Meepo's alive, by the way, Execration. And Chemo has been caught. So Melee Rack's likely to fall, but Grimstroke has finally respawned. In comes the Ignis Fatus. It's going to catch the Alchemist. He gets his stun off in time, though, towards Rusman, but the heal from the Illuminate is there, and they're losing heroes. Execration, four down, no buyback. Meepo dies, but he will return to the battlefield as he immediately snap buys back. Three lanes of barracks going down now, though. Execration have five alive. And they're going to move in for this final defense, but Bristol back up at the front, tanking everything up, and the Alchemist concocts himself. He's getting arrowed, and he's dead. Has buyback and might be forced to use it. He's going to be forced to use it. And uh, there we go. They used it. GG is called. They're going to spend their money on calling it. Five to 25. RRQ absolutely curb stomping Execration in the game one here. But they've got such a good level one battling lineup that it is pretty hard to contest. And Ability Man Jr. is going to show off why right there. Decayed into the ground and Rust Man in trouble as well. Getting body blocked up by Yaha. Very nicely done. Holding on. Holding on. Biding their time and waiting. Now Abaddon with a shield. That's why. Dispels it off. And Chemo fights. The two-man decay yet again up in their face. Ability Man Jr. tries to turn with the brain sap. But Chemo is tanky and he's... Withstanding it all, Rusman battles away with Atomic Yamaguchi. They get the Frost Nova to finally bring the Undying down. But this Abaddon, he is causing problems for the Lycan. And Lich's Yaha was tracking back to try and find a target. Monkey King in trouble middle, damage being dealt. Axe gets the call off. Monkey still turning to fight with the Jingu stacks up. He's going to get finished off by the Brood. And meanwhile, top lane 
R7, salves oh, up, God. healing, running, sprinting away. The Decay is there to land, and he will finally Back. fall. And now they switch targets to the Lycan in the middle. His name isn't Malcolm. He doesn't have two brothers, but his mum is still screaming at him as he's going to get hit and propped with that Curse of Avernus. Slowed and... Oh, man. This Frost Shield. Ugh. 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 Tents and purposes, it is. So you're not wrong. But you're also not right. <laughs> Carl dived under his tier two by the Brood and the Lich. Deary, dear. Oh, clue. Well, R7, Vanguard, and halfway towards his blink, finds himself yet again in a tough spot. Slowed down to an absolute snail's pace. He, he can't move. He can't go anywhere. But Yamaguchi's dropping low, forced to pop the ulti. For a time, we'll crack him back up to full HP again. And that tombstone did some seriously good work. In the meanwhile, though, middle lane, they go in with the Frost Shield yet again. The Boundless Strike juked and dodged by these spiderlings. Beautiful stuff from Yabby. And the fear is there from that cursed gaze. Oh, poor Rusman. Gets absolutely obliterated. They have the blink on the axe now, and he makes a jump onto Palos. Weaver. Absolutely dunked. And they've got a nightmare onto the Monkey King now as well. Quick Fiend's Grip comes in. Shuriken to cancel it off, and Ability Man Jr. has to turn and burn with a brain sap, but the dunk from R7 catches and kills, and now that Sinister Gaze with a big Chain Frost bouncing into the Creep Wave, unfortunately, but Yaha will still likely get caught here. No, never mind. He runs off to the east, and Kimo will be that sacrificial hero. Q have done about a third HP to Roshan. Wukong's command, animation cancelled. In it comes now, though, finally brought out as the courier flies on over. Yamaguchi's in, looking to try and focus down Yabby. The Broodmother's in trouble. The call will try and buy time, but it's not fast enough. R7 is in trouble, and they've jumped the monkey back up into the trees. The Undying is the tombstone down, but the Decay spammed out, and Rustman can't stick on a target. He's chasing down Yaha, but he doesn't do enough damage. Yaha has got the shield on him now, turns the fight with the Shuriken bounce. They've got a catch in the back as R7's found. And there's Carl with the help of Palos, clearing up one, two, three in a a row they know how to count it shifting forward looking for the bane needs the nightmare save himself stick charge brain sap not enough they come in with yabby and the chain frost r7 caught a call but it's not enough oh yabby stuck now needs to fight needs to stand her ground this brood mother has nowhere to run and this is what happens when you do you get chased down and caught out palos looking for more as he moves up. now Wukong's command, the lag, the freezes. What's happening? I don't know. The Crimson Guard from Kimo keeping himself alive through the spidling damage. But they've got a nightmare in the back. It looks like Yamaguchi's taking it off with his Helm Creep, but he's still going to get called up. His Borrowed Time pops out, and they don't have the finish to ah, kill him. Oh, they can't do it. The Abaddon just absolutely shreds them, and now the Lycan has to run. Gets into shapeshift form, sprints away. But this is RRQ. Absolutely nothing to do. Good blink call onto two, though. Aegis down. Carl jumps in. The Bane. Oh, this is problematic. Good balance strike to stop the retreat there of the Axe. And the final tap comes out from Carl. As X-Rag, unfortunate attention, is drawn towards the Lich. And RRQ, they are bleeding out at this moment. So why so quiet? So I assumed my microphone was quiet or something. Anyway, it's irrelevant. Fiend's grip. Weaver. Finally dead. One Tempo half. shifting. Kind of uh, critical mass hitting heroes, right? They get these big items. Maybe this is it. A good pick off onto the monkey. Gets themselves a good chunk. R7. Again, the four hits come through. Silent stuff. Forced to call. Atomic Yamaguchi healed with a soul rip, and that will be the end of the axe for 50 seconds. Ability Man Jr. falls immediately after, and in come the Brood and the like, and the swarms of heroes have arrived, but they are being held back. The uh, strong as fuck execration heroes. They are unkillable, they are untouchable. They will lose one hero, a Baron, but that doesn't matter at all because they chase on relentlessly with the damage flowing through towards Rusman, the Lycan retreating, but Palos will chase him. The track is there as the Fiend's Grip catches, but the Weaver time lapses back and Bane is a goner. Nice nightmare dodge, but it's all too little too late. The Wukong's command with a boundless strike. We'll finish off Yabby. 
Broodmother dead for 84. Sim just to stop the Hellbear Smasher from animation cancelling. Parlo's in trouble though. The time lapse quick. He gets himself back to full. R7 trying to get away, but the Battle Strike holds him in place as well as the Broodmother who webs forward but tracked up, found, and potentially dead. Kimo will give his life as the Tombstone drops. Parlo sprinting, trying to escape. One more hit will do the trick, but Yabby unable to close the gap. Another web gets into range as Rusman arrives from the back, but the Brood is gone without buyback. That's a dieback for Yabby. An undying returns to the battlefield. The Lich is backstabbing. The Chain Frost is out, but x ray can't do too much. Dust forward, so Rusman could maybe get a kill, but the Yule Scepter there for the monkey to arrive, and Yaha will walk it off. Rusman into Wolf form, maybe not walking it off as the big bad wolf shifts in with a speedy, speedy, speedy speedy little shapeshift form and Carl Nightmare is this turnaround city is this comeback town is this RRQ getting the kills they need it might just be they've defended their base but the buybacks are hefty execration can still bring back the monkey and Rusman is going to be taken down buyback available but Axe and Bane left high and dry with nowhere to go should signal the end of this game I keep wanting to say sacrifice gaze or cursed gaze or whatever, but sinister gaze. That's game two. So we are moving to game three of Kimo and Yamaguchi. May have stepped a little too forward here. Undying with a decay and slog with the Eschen shift level one. Thanks and have fun. Immediate. Shackles. Catch the Abaddon. And apparently they don't need to dive. Nice soul rip keeps X-Rag alive. They do. Up to five permanent Aji now, but Monkey King arrives yet again. They've trapped the Undying in the trees. He's getting off some decent decays, and the Soul Rip is there to keep Rusman happy on top. Palos shielded and wants this Undying. Clears him up pretty simply. He even gets the additional Jingu stack as well, so Rusman has to be wary of his movement forward. I'm just looking at this net worth. Come on, finish this fight. Oh, it's Palos gone, huh? He might be a goner here. Shield is already expended. Nice, with a wand. He's got himself away, but they lose the Abaddon. And this Slark, 22 on the Essence Shift, six permanent. It's pretty much the majority of his Bloodstone, and now he's getting chased down. Slark misses the pounce. Carl, where's the Timber Chain? It's level four, range-wise, just out of range of the trees. He might be able to close the gap and get over the ridge, and he does. Escapes with a shield helping him out, and now the turn around. Yamaguchi arrives, the Dazzle to fight through. They've got the Primal split from the Brew. Broodmother moving towards Chemo. They've got Shadow Wave again, but the Cyclone up, so there's no Grave and no bad juju coming out from the Dazzle. So the Abaddon will fall. Slark going to work. Two in a row. This is more agility stacking up, and Timbersaw, that's him done. A triple kill for Rusman as RRQ absolutely slaughter them behind their own tier. Oh, this is big. He does have 20 odd reactive armor stacks. They are whittling down now, though. As Carl is being picked off with his freshly purchased Bloodstone. He's got some regen to play around with now, though. Gets into the tree line, cuts through the forest, but his path has not been created. Monkey King is going to pop his ulti here. To no avail, it appears. Palos. Mischief in two seconds might buy himself enough time, but no, never mind. Shield is problematic now as it adds damage output as well as survivability to this timber saw. He's moved back in, the hex is there, shackles and 10 stick charges. Also potential here for x rag to throw into the mix. Getting jumped on yet again by Carl and finished off by the timber, but the backstab is arriving. Ability Man Jr. looking to defend this tier one with a tombstone and the flesh golem. Needs to soul rip his tombstone to keep it alive, but it's getting right clicked. And will die. Slark arrives though, and Kimo's self grave will put an end to Yamaguchi. And there's no TP, no availability, and Kimo will be a casualty on top. So two for nil. Yeah, of course. He thought he was trying to buy treads. He was trying to buy treads, and he forgot that it's Blades of Attack now, not Gloves of Haste. They've killed off Kimo though, so safe potential here for the Radiant has been pretty much negated, not just mitigated, because the Timber Saw dead for 75 with buyback for their being torn apart by this Slark. Rusman is going absolutely ham. Takes down the monkey and has three dead in quick succession as they're looking for a fourth in the back. The Hexed up Abaddon does get his ulti off and in the front they kill off the Ogre. A five-man wipe is incoming here as RRQ lose zero. He's got nothing to stop silence. He's dead for 80. Just gonna go farm Ancients though. 
Broodmother up on high ground with a Serpent Ward's going to work. That's a good shackle there onto Yamaguchi, but he turns with the Borrowed Time and Monkey King jumps in. No Wukongs though, and dealing with this Tombstone will be difficult because Ability Man Jr. with level 2 ulti has a thousand bonus HP and Primal Split is ready. In comes R7, the blink and the clap with the crits and the hits, they'll clear up two, immediately dead. The Monkey King gone with no buyback as well for one minute, and R7 holds the Primal Split. So they have that for the secondary wave of team fights if they so desire. Five alive for RRQ, another tier three falls, and in comes R7. There we go, Primal Split moving forward. Cyclone up on the Abaddon and chasing forward towards the Ogre. Force them back into their base as Yaha needs to sit down. Behave yourself. You're on the naughty step. Ability Man Jr. is being focused by the Timbersaw, but look at him go. Carl down to half HP. This Primal Split's doing work. Controlling up Carl. The clap, the crits, is it enough? The Bloodstone heal will keep Carl going, but it's a tough one to deal with. Where's the Slark in all this? He's in the middle of the fight now. There's two in a row. Knocks on their door, kicks it down. He doesn't care. Timbersaw, what do you do? You TP home and you sit and cry. No, you don't. You're just about to die. That's it. RRQ surely have this game in the bag. For the Monkey King, Yabby's Broodmother is low HP, but there is nothing they can do to stop RRQ. The Wukong's command looks good, but Ogre's dead in his fountain, and the shackles from x rang hold the Monkey in place, and GG, well played as called. In the series, they need to. They are fourth place in the Asian Premier Division Group B.